Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Tuesday, September the 8th, after a nice Labor Day weekend, back to work. Education's on the top of the agenda today. Forward Arkansas, a coalition of people interested in education, led by some reform elements, the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation, the Walton Family Foundation, issued a report that's been several months in the making on ways to move Arkansas forward. The Benji Hardy describes it as a consensus report lacking some of the hot button terms like charter schools and vouchers and school choice that set people's uh, ears to ring in immediately. Has some important things in it though. It includes some good things. Uh, more pre-K education. Arkansas needs that. A better effort to send healthy kids to school including with proper nutrition. Good training for teachers and particularly for principals to keep people in a school. It does have some hot button stuff in it though. One is a recommendation to move school elections to the general election. This of course would put a lot more people voting on school issues make it much harder likely to pass taxes. One of the reasons that, that school officials have tended to like to have school elections mostly populated by people who care about schools. There's also some talk about speeding the timetable for doing things about schools that have low test scores depending on how this is carried out, particularly if it's in conjunction with another run at privatizing schools and turning such schools over to private operators. It's sure to be controversial in the legislature. <coughs> Excuse me. State Education Commissioner Johnny Key also announced today that work was beginning with great speed to do something about Arkansas's math and literacy standards. Uh, they're going to have a new name. They won't call them Common Core anymore, but the state officials continue to insist that they're going to be a great deal like those in other states, so we're going to have some meaningful comparisons. For now, we're not going to use a test that's going to be able to be compared with many states. Maybe only one's going to use the same test in time. That, that may change. News in Kentucky today had some Arkansas angle to it. Kim Davis, a Kentucky clerk who was sent to jail for contempt for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples despite a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that she should, is going to be released from jail. The judge there thinks that the office has complied with his order by issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Kim Davis is going to be released. She is going to have a jailhouse meeting with Mike Huckabee, who's trying to breathe a little life into his dying presidential campaign by making himself the uh, leader of all the Christian conservatives who don't like gay marriage and love those who hate it as much as they do. Uh, not so sure that this will necessarily turn out that well for Huckabee. Ted Cruz is going to join him for one thing. Kim Davis's attorney says she will never comply, that she won't allow a marriage license to be issued if it has her name on it. Could be she may go back to jail before this is all over with. We've got some elections to talk about in Arkansas. Early voting began today in Bentonville and the school district on school board elections. A very hot election between somebody who opposes a non-discrimination policy for the school district, she's an incumbent, and somebody who's willing to consider a non-discrimination policy. If this boils down to that same old religious uh, partisan issue that we're seeing played out across the country, Bentonville's pretty conservative, you might predict a bad outcome there for equality. Even more important today is today is Election Day in Fayetteville <clears throat> for that civil rights ordinance that would include among those protected <clears throat> in employment, housing, and public accommodations, LGBT people. That is, you couldn't discriminate against gay people on, on account of who they were. A lot of good Christians, so-called, don't like that very much in Fayetteville either. They're fighting this as a strong organization group. I notice they're running vans at the polls from the university, which ought to be a support for this ordinance. There's been a great early voting. Hard to say how that's going to turn out. Polls close tonight at 7.30. Check our Arkansas blog later tonight. We'll try and let you know what happened. President Obama Looks like he scored a victory. Uh, Senate Democrats say they have enough votes to filibuster any effort to have a vote on an opposition vote against the Iran nuclear deal. That's a victory for Obama, a slight local angle on that. Senator Tom Cotton will not be happy, but Senator Cotton's rarely very happy about anything, I think. What else have we got going? The Sierra Club today is going to try and put the state's feet to the fire on cleaning up haze caused by electric power plants in Arkansas. The state's fighting and Attorney General Leslie Rutledge has just recently joined to fight even harder against cleaning up our air. <laughs> Another interesting thing I think happened. Uh, Oh, one other before I get to the final. <clears throat> uh, the Satan Satanic Temple says they have formally requested to put a Baphomet uh, statue, a, a, a graven idol of, of a goat-headed creature on the Capitol grounds of the Ten Commandments monument is put there. I think this is the formal step toward a, a certain lawsuit if the Ten, Ten Commandments monument goes forward. If the Arkansas legislature is going to honor religion on the Capitol grounds, other, other belief systems need to be recognized as well. And finally, a word about our favorite state senator, Jason Rayford. He livened up an otherwise quiet Memorial Day weekend by 
Shortly after having a, an encounter with a, a constituent who wanted to ask him about his position on, on some matter of law or another, happened to post on, on Twitter a comment about how it's not smart to harass somebody in a parking lot who has a concealed carry permit like the senator does, and it's a good thing the guy backed off because he was armed and ready. Now, this sounded an awful lot like a threat to uh, use deadly force against somebody who disagreed with you politically. The senator has set off a, a usual firestorm on social media. The senator said, oh, I wasn't talking about that guy. He was merely rude. He went out of his way, by the way, to denigrate this guy. At some point, he had a liberal who believed in all kinds of ungodly things, but said that wasn't who he was talking about. He never would say just exactly who he was talking about. The senator has a record of, of walking around the world pretty, pretty fearfully. He carries a gun whenever possible. He's made many complaints to police about perceived threats. Sometimes the Jason rape or harassment just means people speaking their mind. That is the American way, isn't it? Perhaps not to Jason. You know, they have different views of the First Amendment over on that side of the political aisle. I'm Max Brantley. Back tomorrow.